And we're live! Hello, everybody! We're live right now! We're live right now! Hi, guys! It's been a little bit. It's been a hot minute. It's been a bit. Things have been happening. Is that true? Um, yeah, actually. Uh, you, you have a car now. I do. I bought a car. I, yeah, I bought a car yesterday. Uh because my fiance passed her driving test. Not me, I failed my driving test again <laughs> for the second time. Oh, but, Bryce, you failed? But but my fiance passed and so we have a car now. So that's kind of cool, having a car, not gonna lie. I was proud of her, I was disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Would you like to explain how you failed? Uh, not particularly, but I will say <laughs> that um, I failed, uh, I failed the first time, uh, and the dude was a real big dick. He was a real big jerk. I mean, like, he was just mean <laughs> to me and my Amy. But uh, but we had him yesterday. He was very nice in comparison. So I guess he was just having a bad day. Yeah, I can confirm. He was also mean to me. I wasn't even taking my test. But yeah, so I have a car now. Yeah, it, uh, so before stream, I have to tell the story, um, while it's fresh, the wounds are still fresh. I've not heard the um, story. Before stream, I was walking my dog, Thor, uh, this one, um, and, uh, you know, as I do, he has to go to the bathroom, I have to walk him, so I'm out there, and there's this, there's this little old man, he's probably in his 80s or 90s. Yo! Thank you for the raid, Yo. Riramal. 170, just in time to hear the story about Scott's dog. <laughs> just in time. Well, it's not really about my dog. It's about me getting yelled at by an 80-year-old. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just keep telling that story. So I go outside. I go to walk my dog before stream. And um, I uh, there's this little old man, probably in his 80s or 90s, in an electric wheelchair who's just, like, scooting towards me, right? Like, he's zooming along. And... Um, I'm like, I'm watching him, and, and so I, like, wave and stuff. And he goes, have you seen a little dog about this big, a little black dog? And I go, no. And he goes, well, she got loose. I'm looking for her. And I'm like, oh, you know, that sucks. Like, you know, I'm like, man, that's not good. Um, so then I, I go, I put my dog inside. And I'm like, well, I'm going to help him look for it. So I get on my bike, and I start riding around the apartment complex looking for this little dog. And... Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking around, and all of a sudden, I see a little black dog rolling around in the grass, just getting all dirty and stuff. So I very quickly, I, I park my bike, I put the kickstand down, I get off, I run towards it, I try and, and get like get her to come to me. Uh, but she runs away because she's a little dog. I um, guess she was scared. And um, so, I you know, I, like, I, I chase her around to the other side of the building. I eventually meet up with the guy. We're watching her run around. And I'm like, no, don't worry, I'll try and get her. And, like, I'm, I'm following her around. Uh, I, I end up going all the way around the building running. Um, you know, I was I was behind the building after I, I went around there, maybe like a minute and a half. Um, so I'm like, okay, I got to like, you know, I got to go look for her. So, you know, I walk back and I'm walking around to try and meet the dog on the other side of the building. Because like, if the building is like this, me and the old guy were right here and the dog is going this way. So I start walking this way, and this is where I parked my bike. Well, when I get to about here, there's this old woman who looks like the devil. Um, and she goes, is that your bike? And I'm like, uh, yeah, hold on, I really got to go. She's like, you've parked it in between two spots. You're taking up two spots on your bike. And I'm like, I, you know, I've only been gone like a minute. Like I'm kind of in a hurry. She goes, "It's been more than a minute. I've been sitting here watching on my my watch, and when that you've been gone, and you you're taking up oh shit, you're taking up two spots." And and so like she's just throwing this big fit. I'm like, "Lady, I gotta go. Like I'm trying to find this. I'm like my neighbor's dog is, and I never even met the guy before. Is off the leash. I'm trying to find him. I gotta go." Um, and she goes, well, you tell him to put a leash on that damn dog. And I said, listen, ma'am, my apartment is, I told her my apartment number. And I'm like, the mail is right over there. 
write me a letter with your complaint and put it in that mailbox over there and I'll write a letter back to you, but I got to go. So then I left and then I, I ended up chasing the dog back around and it jumped in the wheelchair with the old guy. But I couldn't believe that she was throwing such a fit that like, it's not like somebody was trying to park in. And first of all, it's a bike, right? So like, if you have two, like a parking sp two spaces like this, right? The bike was parked like right here. Like, you could still park. I mean, it wasn't like it took up the whole... I thought it would be more rude to take up a whole spot with uh, just a little bike. But yeah, I couldn't believe that, man. She also, was in living such here, a tizzy about it. In the same place with you, I can say, uh, parking spots are open everywhere, especially right now. Like, yeah. like, you did not impede anyone from parking anywhere. I don't know. I don't I even believe know specifically it. where you were, but I know in this parking lot, there's always spots open. She was... Uh... Just in a mood. She's like, I'm going to go tell the office about this. I'm like, okay, do that. Maybe they'll help us look for the dog. Like, I don't know. She was just in a... That's crazy. She was in a hateful mood, uh, I suppose. But we got the dog, so... Was the old man and that's why I, happy, I assume? Yeah, he was. His, his dog's name was Chica. Mm. Um, but, and we got it. No thanks to the the hateful old woman. Did you leave the eye out of stocking on purpose? It's just a sketch. How about you don't judge me? Oh, okay. How I about just, you don't judge my work? I was just I was just kind of confused about why you wouldn't like write the name properly. It's almost hey, like when someone hey, titled it they like Shut up. It's like when somebody like tried to make the title for the stream and they spelled algorithm wrong. You know, it's yeah, algorithm <laughs> like like a beat. Well, How's everyone else doing? We've uh, we've not been. When was the last time we were live? Wednesday? Last Wednesday? Probably, because I don't remember what we were doing Friday and then Monday. Friday we was... we were working and then Monday yeah we were busy. Yeah, Monday was your your test. That's well this Monday, but also the Monday before that we were busy. Oh uh, well, that Monday was um. Well, the thing about it is. Uh, I don't. I don't remember what that we went bowling. Was. We went bowling. Oh right, we, we yeah, were yeah we went Jesus bowling. Christ, Scott. I, I mean, I can't keep up with everything that we do. You act like we're so fucking busy. I mean, kind of. Oh man, we're gonna be really busy tonight. We're gonna eat five guys and play board games. Oh jeez, and that's it's a pretty good time. Oh, I'm, man. I'm not gonna lie. I never said it wouldn't be a good time. It's just not that hard of a thing to remember. You're just a hater. I do hate you. You're the you're like that old woman. <laughs> I like the. Did you really say the write me a letter thing? Yeah, because she was right by the mailbox. Like that it was that building over there. That's a banger of a response. I hope you get a letter in the mail. I hope so too. I'll write her back. Maybe you'll get to meet her when the pool opens. You know, the pool opens on Friday. Oh, I Bryce know. Bryce has talked about it nonstop. You, Scott has maybe talked about this pool opening more than anything else I've ever encountered in my entire life with him. I've known this man for, like, fucking 15 years at this point. Nothing, nothing has been as important as this goddamn pool to him. You're goddamn right. <laughs> I'm so hype about it. I've been with this man through all of his highest highs and lowest lows. This You think this pool was the second coming of Christ. You just haven't been in the pool. <laughs> you don't know. One thing I will say about this apartment complex versus the one I lived in before is the parking's a lot better here. The one in uh where I used to live. I guess I could say where I used to live. I guess it doesn't matter anymore. The one in Aberdeen. Um, it, uh, it fucking, it was so crowded all the time. There was, like, never a free park. Like, if someone came to visit you, there was, like, never a parking spot for them, really. Well, the problem with this parking lot here is that there are these fucking idiots that park their bikes in between two spots. That is true. <laughs> I've heard it's a rampant problem. It's 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 a big problem. He I saw a guy. He was there for almost two minutes. You know, God forbid. Running around with his dog. So we're giving away a plushie. Oh, today. yeah. That we're this stream, we're gonna give away a plushie and we're gonna give away a book. I think if I misspoke, then we're not doing that, but I think we're also giving away a book. Well, we're doing it now. 
Well, before stream, I said, "Are we giving?" You said, "Are we giving yeah, away a book?" Yeah, and I said, "Yeah." And then you said, "It's just picking." Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, we're just picking, just picking, just picking. Um, so I guess we could do that whenever. Um. Well, I feel like we should give one away now, mm -hmm. and then one away, um, at the end of stream. What should we give away now? The plushie or the book? I feel like we should do the book now. Okay, we can do the book now. Allow me a minute to remember how to do a giveaway. All right. Um, Once we learn how to do a giveaway, then you guys will away will be given. Um. Okay. So, ba 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 ba. ba let me see. Uh, we'll do the keyword. We'll do uh. Fucking. We'll do the what's a good keyword for the panty bear? A uh, panty. Good. That's what I had already typed in. Okay. So if I remember how to do this correctly, if you all type in the word panty, you'll enter yourself for the giveaway. So everyone type in the word panty if you want a copy of the panty bear. Do it. Do it right now. And it's working. Good. Okay. So everyone Great. do that. We'll give it a minute to go. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll okay. wait. Keyword is bit. panty. You gotta type it exactly the way it's typed on screen. So it has to be lowercase. I'm sorry, I'm a bad person and I made it lowercase. Why did you do that? I don't know, cause I just, I'm just stupid. True. Yes, yeah, so we'll let this go for a minute to let everyone type their panties in. That's let a, us see your panties. <laughs> yeah, that's Send a funny sentence panties. to say. And then we'll, we'll roll it. Yeah, when we when we do the uh, when we do the plushie one, we should make it jar. Yeah, and the way this will work is whoever wins, uh, DM us, DM Scott on Discord or me. I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess actually, be better to email Discord. They really have to DM me or just at me in the server, and I'll add you. And then um, we'll get your address and we'll send it out. Yeah, because of my settings, you actually can't DM me. Yeah, you me also can't Discord, DM me, so. so just just at me in the server. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll add you in the old DM. Okay, it isn't like we're getting any new ones in, so we all good? We all ready? Do it. Okay, I'm going to roll. One last second for anyone to type that's not typed. Okay, we're going to roll. The winner is Promare93. Promare93. You want a copy of the panty bear. I wish I actually had a copy here to show you. I actually have a copy right behind me. I could grab real quick. It's yeah, already show the people what they want. I like that we're just looking at this the stream on this copy is actually I have the fucking Twitch stream pulled up. My bad. Um, this copy is actually pre-signed already by both of us, and it's one of the only ones that still has a drawing of Lucia in it. This is one of the early ones that we meant to give away that we didn't. Uh, so yeah, copy of the Panty Bear. So Promare just, uh, like, at me on Discord in the server or something. And, uh, and we'll, right, cool. we'll message. Yeah, in a little bit we'll give away the, um, we'll give away a plush. Happy to do it. Congratulations. We'll probably give away more stuff, like more books and more plushies in the future. Yeah, the only reason we haven't been is because Bryce forgot to do the... Oh, I'll kill thing. you. I'll actually <laughs> kill you. Don't even. Yeah, um, definitely more books. I don't know how many more plushies we have to give away, but we should have a fair few, right? Yeah. So. <sighs> also, uh, at some point, Scott, we're gonna have to sign more books. How many do we have left? Three. That are signed. Oh. Uh, not including this one. There's three after this one. 
Well, then... So, not a big deal right now, but depending on how many orders we get in by the end of the week. We will... Show the Lucia plushie? Uh... I mean, I could grab one real quick if you want, Scott. Yeah, I'd have to dig through my closet. To... Okay, give me a second. I have to go dig through my closet, but I'm pretty sure I know where it is. It's just us now, folks. The the Bryce Menace is gone. I'm, uh, I'm drawing my, my little pup, Thor. Um, I don't. I, I I've just wanted to do this for a long time, and I I don't know why I haven't. Um, he's chewing on toy corn in this drawing because he has a he has a toy corn, and he really likes it. This is the Lucia plush. That's the second one we'd be giving away. Uh, this is the bag for it, and then let me get her fucking big head ass out. Head ass? Yeah. But the plushie won't be signed. I'm sorry, I apologize. This is this is the plushie. This is the second one. She holds the little crab in her hand. Yep. So this is her. Nice. She likes to fall over a lot. She has a big ass head. I actually have two of them behind me. But I don't know if you can see, one of them has fallen over, and it's just laying on her face behind me. Um, and I've just, I just never fix her because she just always falls back over. <laughs> she has a big ass head. When did we do that campaign? That one, like, around this time last year. Not a, well, around like August last year, I think. Damn. Yeah, it's been a good while. Um, here, let me check the exact. Let me let me let me run the numbers. Get your people to Yeah, I'll get my people to contact their people. Um, May fourteenth was when the last one ended. So yeah, it actually was this time of year. It's actually a lot longer than I thought. We've just been holding on to all of these extra ones for... Well, I guess we stopped streaming. That was the reason. It's not through. as yeah. exciting to give away stuff when you're not streaming. Because Can't Take that, Discord users. <laughs> well, because it's fun to actually have, like, the interaction with people. So, like, I don't know. I like to boost my own ego is what I'm saying. I don't think you need to boost your own ego anymore. Oh, I don't know. I Have you seen my writing? Where can I buy it? Um, the plushie was a limited time thing. Um, yeah, these are just left. Or, well, we bought extras just specifically to give away. Yeah, we bought um, like 10 or 15 extras just that we could have to give away to, to friends and family and people on stream and stuff like that. Um... But the book is still available to buy, um, and the book is not a limited time thing. Um, I fucking... I tried to type in my own chat, and it told me to fucking log into Twitch. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> let me let me type it in here, I guess, since I, apparently I can't do it in Streamlabs. Um, there. That's where you can buy the Panty Bear if you want to buy it. It's stupid, but okay. <laughs> Um, that was really dumb. I uh, love the work y'all do. I'm a big fan. Thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, we, I mean, we'll, we'll be doing more merch stuff. I don't know if we'll be doing more plushies. I don't, I don't know about that or, you know, I'm not saying we won't or we will. Um, but we'll be definitely be doing more merch stuff in general, similar to the plushie at the very least, um, in the future. So there will be plenty more stuff like that, uh, Merch in that kind of sense, though, will probably be mostly limited run things, just because um, just the nature. Yeah, yeah, just because the the thing about doing like a book or something like that is like Scott and I can we confront the whole cost of the book. Like with the Panty Bear, we we just bought all the copies outright, and we were like, okay, we can sit on this until we like you know we we can sit on this and accept that we're not gonna make a profit for a while. But the problem with like the merch and stuff like that is stuff like that's so expensive, and it's a lot harder to get made. 
there's just a lot more that goes into it, so you need to kind of get the money from the campaign to fund it. It's a lot less feasible just to order a bunch of it and hope it sells. Are you going to do book giveaways in the book launch stream? Uh, when Kindred Heavens launches, we'll probably give away copies of it. I don't know if yeah, when probably it... probably not until after the Kickstarter. Yeah, I was going to say, probably not until after the Kickstarter. Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely after the Kickstarter, we'll probably give away. So, honestly, during the whole Kindred Heavens Kickstarter, uh, we'll probably be most of our streams and... A lot of things sent will be probably centered around Kindred Heavens. There will probably be a lot of us talking about it and marketing it and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely once once it ends, we'll, pro we'll probably also give away some of the, uh, the the merch from it too. Just because we'll, we'll undoubtedly have leftovers of some of the Kindred Heavens merch. Um, when designing a character... people that fucking... Like when you get a repeated calls to confirm stuff. <laughs> I have a hair appointment tomorrow and... Uh... I've gotten like a text message, two phone calls, and I just made the appointment yesterday. Fucking, it's really, I'll be it's really there. funny that you Leave were just alone. you were just complaining about this, but with a different place. Yeah, because I, I I don't know. It's just like the new thing. When designing a character, what are the first thing you guys keep in mind? The main basic concept or something else? If you mean uh, artistically, well, I have very little input in that. Um, yeah, I think. Um, when you're designing a character well it depends on what you're doing it for right like just so i i guess keeping the purpose of the character in mind um like most of the characters that i design are for uh like the books that we do um and so in that sense all right situation i'm pretty much just trying to think of their role in the story their personality like what i could do in a design that would sort of convey the things about the character that we want to convey if i'm just doing a character like stray or something like that like just only for twitter uh i just focus on doing stuff i like or mia like making it shapes that i like faces that i like designs hair like clothes and and stuff like that and part of that's figuring out their personality as well and sticking with that so in, in a way they're kind of the same but um I would say just keep in mind what the the point of the character is. Like I said, if it's like a character like Mia or Stray that only exists uh, to be like pretty eye candy, um, or to like you know interact with other characters on Twitter, like then you, you're probably going to want to focus on making them eye candy, you know, making them look good, and and so figure out their personality and work from there. Also, with uh, comic books, the one thing you've always told me is to make them simple and repeatable. Yeah, if you're uh, that, that goes into like, um, you know, what you're designing it for. Like, if you're designing it for a comic book uh, or animation, especially, um, you want to make sure that like it's repeatable because uh, you're going to be drawing that character a lot. Um, like, so you don't want to go super crazy and give your character a bunch of armor and and stuff like that and, and crazy intricate hair that you're gonna have to draw every time um you want to try and make sure it's repeatable um and that's just something to keep in mind as well one of the best examples of that i think that uh you we used to always joke about was how like scar from fullmetal alchemist has like the really complex arm tattoos and then he wears a jacket for like 90 percent of the series yeah so that you can't see them um yeah tattoos hard to draw well, not, I mean, not hard to draw, just, like, time-consuming, especially, like, intricate sleeves and stuff. Uh, also, Avid Gladiator said, how do you go about producing a book like that? Like, where do you go? Who do you talk to? Um, I'm assuming you'd mean specifically, like, manufacturing it. Um, honestly, there is a lot of really great places uh, just there. So you can you have essentially two options. You can go with a local printer, which is you... um. You know, you look in your area and you find printers. And uh, the thing about that is you might get better rates and, you know, blah, blah. The The problem with that is that it's really difficult to do. Um, and a lot of times... Depends on your area. Yeah, a lot of times... Yeah, and if you're in a really big area, it's probably not too bad. But um, if you... um, Especially if you do comics, like a lot of places like that, they're made to handle books or things like that, not comics. And printing comics is very different. There's a lot of great uh, large-scale printers. Uh, Print Ninja 
is uh, one, they're very great. They're the one we used with the panty bear. They're very nice. They're very helpful. Their prices are good. Um, it's also things like Mixum, uh, uh, Greco Comic Wellspring, I think is the name of the other big one. Um, you just look them up, but the biggest ones you're going to find, you're going to see Mixum and, and Print Ninja's name a lot. Um, there are plenty of other ones that I'm forgetting. Um, you just go to them and basically do what they tell you to, honestly, uh, format it how they tell you to format it, ask them, stuff like that. It, uh, yeah. And then the, the details of it that go into, there's a lot of things you have to think about, like bleed and stuff like that. When it comes to printing books that I don't know as much about, but Scott could talk more to, but that's one of those kind of things that just, you kind of have to learn it through trial and error. Yeah, it also depends on, uh, you know, who you're working with, what kind of format they want, your size of what you're printing and um, everything like that. So, but basically anywhere you go, uh, Print Ninja, like, like he said, they're the ones that did the panty bear. Uh, they were they were perfectly fine to work with. Um, they, uh, they'll go through and, and tell everything. So like when you get your print files ready, they'll look over them and be like, hey, this doesn't look right like this. Um, you know, your, your bleed isn't quite big enough or, or something like that. So uh, it's pretty easy, really, the, the whole process. I mean, it can be annoying to set up the files, uh, especially if you have a long book. But um, they give you a lot of help going through it. Uh, we, you know, we tried Mixum. We actually printed a few books with Mixum just to get a sense of their quality. And we didn't really like it very much. Uh, the colors on the cover were really off. Um, so we ended up not going with them and going, cause we wanted to print in America. Cause if you print overseas, like with print Ninja, they print in China. Um, your, uh, your print times are, or shipping times are a lot more or a lot longer. Um, so like we ordered the panty bear and didn't get it for like seven or eight weeks. And that's normal, uh, printing overseas. And that's one of the big downsides with it. I mean, you actually usually can get cheaper quotes overseas, um, as with most things. It's just the shipping that kills you. Yeah, it. Um, but I will say one thing about Print Ninja shipping is that it did take a while, but all the books arrived in perfect condition. Um, everything came perfectly. We uh we ordered like 750 copies of the Panty Bear, so we got like 28 boxes. Not a single book has had a problem so far. Um, except for I think there was one book that had like one page accidentally glued to another one or something. Um, but other than that, like there's not been any, like none of the books were bent or damaged or anything. I mean, so that would be who I recommend front engine. Yeah. Love working with them. And one of the yeah. biggest things, thank you, Jay Flair for the sub. Um, thank you. Oh, my second monitor just died for a second okay it's fine we're fine um one of the biggest things to think about with um the places or with, with when you're getting books is that a lot of books or a lot of printers i mean um you get discounts the more books you get at once so i said like with the panty bear we got like 750 copies at once uh that's because the price different you you the book gets the books get more cheaper to print the more you get printed at once essentially you get like a deal uh so that like it's it's a very important thing to think about um because it's a it, it can almost be barely profitable at all if you order like a small quantity of books from these big publishers because they're expecting you to order a lot um that's what I was talking about, how Scott and I could, like, we were able, like, with, with a book, we can order the books and then sit on them for a while, knowing it's going to take a while, because we had, we bought so many at once. Thank you for the help. I genuinely appreciate it. No problem. Trust me. We, uh, it was hell. It is hell, going through all this. It's... So the worst part of our jobs is having to deal with all like the business and logistics side of it. True. And I make Bryce do most of it. It's the worst part of my job. <laughs> but it's a necessary part. Love your work. Thanks. 
Thank you, citizen. <laughs> yeah, say, read every com reply to every comment just like that. What's your favorite part of the design process? Favorite part of the design process? Uh, so for me, when I first have a design, I will, um, you know, normally it, it starts one way. Like, I'll, I'll be like, okay, I have the design finished and like I'm, I'm, I'm ready and go. And then when I start drawing the character a lot, especially like for comics, usually by the time like I get near the end of the project or at least the project gets like really far underway, I'm drawing the character in a bit of a different way just because I've done it so many times. I'm starting to figure out little shortcuts or little ways to do different things uh, a different way or more efficient or in a cuter way or whatever. Like, So I would say that after I've been done with the design for a little while and drawing it quite a bit and just sort of discovering ways to refine it. Because um, I would say that, you know, for me, like a design isn't finished until I've drawn it a thousand times. Uh, just because, like, I, you're always changing little things, but either with your art style or with, uh, you know, whatever else is going on. I would say that's my favorite part, because then it starts to get really, like, you're refining really little details, and you start to get a lot more consistent. Um, you know, once you've drawn something that many times, you're like, oh, yeah, I know how I draw this, this character's hair or their eyes or whatever. Um... So I guess that would be my answer. Just do that. <clears throat> so do you guys not have dedicated managers? That's interesting. Also very tiring. No, we've actually, I mean, we, him and I have had some pretty serious conversations about hiring someone to, to do that kind of work. But uh, the real problem is just that it doesn't come up enough to justify it. And also like, we're just really anal about things. And a lot of times we would rather do something ourselves than have someone else help help us with it. It's a good and a bad thing. Uh, part of the problem as well is that to do, like, for somebody to do the type of work that we want um, and that, that would be beneficial, like handling all of the, you know, logistical stuff, tax stuff, shit like that, um, like, that's a really important job. And so whoever would be doing that needs to be pretty well equipped um and like it, to get somebody that's that well equipped they you know typically they make a lot of money already so they're really expensive um so that's something that like is sort of the the barrier i guess is that you know you can't just go hire anybody uh to handle sensitive stuff like getting books printed and doing all that or or setting up stores or doing tax stuff or whatever. Like you can't just get anybody. Um, so the people that you would like to get, usually it's, uh, they're pretty expensive. And so it makes it not worth it in the end. So we, we just do everything ourselves. Um, we'd like to eventually maybe get somebody, but. Yeah, the only thing, I mean, we do have an agent, which I guess is in some way similar, but that's specifically for if we're sending a book around. Uh she helps us and handles a lot of that stuff. That's like the closest thing I could think that we have or have ever had to anything like that. Um, but even that was a process of just like, it was finding someone that we really, really trusted and really, really wanted to work with because uh, we're very picky. How do you pronounce Lucia's name? Genuinely curious, Lucia. Lucia. A lot of people say Lucia, Lucia. That's also fine. I don't think that's wrong. But the way Scott and I have always said it, it's Lu Lucia. Lucia Lockhart. Nope. No, Lancaster. Lancaster. It was Lock Lockhart yes. a once upon a time. It, it was Lockhart when I named her. It was Lancaster when you decided that she didn't have a last name and renamed her. Uh, how do you choose color palettes? I love the design and color choices for a lot of the outfits and characters. Honestly, I just go with what I think looks good. Um, I, I'm not, like, by nature, I'm not a very intuitive artist. I usually have to think really hard about everything that I do, like every line that I make. Um, 
And so when I was trying to get better at doing color, I kind of just like hit a big roadblock with that because it's like, okay, well, you know, you can't really do that with with that. Like you can't really like, I mean, you can, but like, I, I'm not super good at color theory. So I, I just sort of practiced and got to where I felt comfortable um, going with what feels right. So like, you'll see me a lot of times um, when I'm doing like, uh, like when I did this ear color or even when I was just doing the color of his fur here, like I just sort of kept fiddling with it until I'm like, I felt it. I felt it. I was like, oh yeah, that looks, that looks good. We can go with that. Um, and so it's, that's not really a helpful answer other than just like, you know, keep practicing it and, uh, work on getting to the point where you feel that level of comfort and you, you, you can sort of sense it yourself. I'll, I'll, when I have to pick shadow color, actually, I'll show you right here. Like this is a toy corn. So like, I know I need to get it yellow. So I just get it somewhere in that ballpark. And then at this point, I'm like, okay, I don't like this. So I just sort of keep fiddling with it until I, I feel that it looks right. And uh, that's looking pretty good right about there-ish. But you can see, like, I'm just, I'm literally fiddling with, like, the hue, the saturation, the, the brightness, um, all that stuff until eventually I get something that I feel uh works and same thing here like I'm, i need to get make it green um so i'm just sort of going trying to figure out what i think looks good and that's mainly how i do my color and like i said that took me a long time to practice and get good at um because it's not how i work anywhere else uh and you'll see me also go back throughout like the drawing process and just fiddle with certain colors um throughout it so like i might go back and change the color of that corn i might change the color of his fur um just to to get something that i think looks right and, and it gives me like time throughout the whole process uh to fiddle around with it um and like yeah I'm a, i know i'm actually going to change the color of his fur because it's not super accurate but um it's all about feeling for me when it comes to color just do that just do that. Shaw, can you guys or have like a just poop oh. here? Oh, you go. No, you 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 go. You good? Yeah, that's, that's some good poop. <laughs> Shaw, can you guys have not drawn Lucia cosplaying as Lucia from Devil May Cry? The problem with that is then people would think about Devil May Cry too. The problem with that is I I don't know who that is. The girl from Devil May Cry Two, the bad one. I've never played Devil May Cry Two. So Devil May Cry Two is the bad one. I answered your question for you. <laughs> We're going to have a hardcore Devil May Cry fan that's watching. No, the hardcore Devil May Cry fans are the ones that hate Devil May Cry 2. <laughs> Although I will say, uh, someone that used to would just like go to Blockbuster with my dad and just rent the same games over and over. Um, I, uh, I would... Uh, just go and rent uh, fucking Devil May Cry 2 over because I beat Devil May Cry 1 and then I would just go and I would just rent Devil May Cry 2 over and over because Devil May Cry 2 is essentially two games like there's one is Dante and then one is the girl Lucia um, and uh, and yeah as a kid so I've, I've actually as a kid probably played Devil May Cry 2 the most and well, wasn't that good Grinch. yeah it wasn't that good and then Devil May Cry three was too hard for me when I was a when I was a little baby. Appreciate all the input input so far. I recently decided I was going to start putting my foot out in the art world door. That's all you can do. Just do it. Have fun. All you can do is all you can do. Wow, cringe. Thanks, Watsky. <laughs> you know he follows you. True. To be fair, who, who doesn't follow me on Twitter? A, a lot of people. No, Obama follows me. That's not, that's not true. No, but it'd be sick. If it it'd be pretty sick. <laughs> These dog drawings are so cute. Gentlemen, I'm stupid. I confused that Lucy with the other character, Lady. Oh, I see.
So you've talked about doing this, but actually, I've never once heard you talk about doing this post sheet, but your Amy has talked about you doing this post sheet for a very long time. What finally spurred it on? Well, I was just looking at him, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what a weird little thing. We took him to get his nails trimmed today, you and me did. We did, yeah. When you say it like that, it, I don't know, it sounds like we were on a date to take him to get his nails trimmed. Uh, me and my boy Bryce, we were just out there taking the dog. He did. Thor really wanted to get in my car yesterday. I mean, he really, he he was, he wanted in. I opened my door and I swear to God, he, he was going to drive it away. He likes cars. He likes going places. Only sometimes. He doesn't like when it's just me. He likes when other people get in the car. That's very exciting for him. I bet there's a really funny story about why he doesn't like when it's just you. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> I bet there's a really goofy little story about that. No, see, this is what I was talking about. This, this, yeah, this green, disgusting. <laughs> Misu sub a tier one, been sub for twenty three months. <laughs> hey, Amy. That's pretty funny. Uh, I was actually super inspired by the way Scott's line art, uh, which is probably a weird part of the art to compliment. Do you guys have anything you like about anything that you feel is something people don't point out or compliment enough? I think you and I, one of our most stereotypical answers to this is we always talk about uh, Toriyama's design and how I feel like enough people don't actually talk about like how brilliantly simple a lot of the DBZ designs are. Yeah, Toriyama is the, the goat of uh simple designs um and that's something that like you really it really started to be apparent towards like the halfway point and then the end of the panty bear um bryson scott that store and uh you know where i i was like reading a lot of the stuff he's doing and i was like man his designs and like his style the way he does it is so simple but it's so effective um and that's when i really started to try and incorporate that in my uh my own work um, i'm trying to think if there's anything else um also, I mean, I thanks there's... for the compliment on the line art i uh line art is something that i've i in my life i've worked very hard to get especially because i started in black and white comics so it was obviously you know pretty important um so that's something i've i've always worked really hard on I'm trying to think. I mean, there's plenty of things that, like, we really like that, like, people don't point out enough. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to think about. A lot of things like that I feel like I find when I study someone's, like, writing or just stuff like that. Um, I can't think of any specific examples off the top of my head, though. Wow, no specific examples. Wow, you, go ahead. You think of a specific example. Go ahead. Go. Do it. Yeah, you can't. Uh... Cringe your mother <laughs> i'm gonna tell her you said that no don't she's a lovely woman i met her once i'm gonna call she was her tired up. and she wanted to go home she she, she did want to go home <laughs> you'll probably get to meet her again this summer though we'll see her again not meet her again i guess i think both work well i decided only one work and i'm the writer fuck you all right algorithm <laughs> Al Gore. Do y'all have a favorite character design from a piece of media? Hmm. A lot of good designs out there. Every Dragon Ball Z design. Uh, you know, this is this is a random one. Um, who's 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 that bitch from Dragon Ball with the black hair? Like, Mai? Mai, yeah. Her. Like, ad adult Mai. That's my, uh... That, that, that's my answer. <laughs> um, trying to think of one that's, like, not... I guess I, that's not, like, Dragon Ball Z or something like that. I've always really loved, uh... Kaneda's design from Akira. Um... 
like, like him in his jacket and everything. That's always been one of my favorite character designs. Itachi, really good it's, peak shonen design. Itachi's pretty sick. Kakashi's also pretty sick. Kakashi ruined covering a character's eye ever for any other character in Shonen, I feel like. Especially if they also have white hair. Hmm, I wonder who, who, who what, what's being referenced right now. That dog reminds me of a cartoon pig from a show I remember. All right. Thor does kind of like a cow. That's like one of my favorite things about him is, uh, and he'll graze too. Like he'll just eat he grass does. like a cow. <laughs> so it's really funny. This is the dog I was walking uh, that led to me being yelled at by an 80 year old woman. She also kept being like, "We live here. We live here," and I'm like, "Yeah, I live here too, bitch. Like, what do you, like, what do you want?" Well, maybe you'll see her again, and she'll apologize. Maybe, maybe it's kind of like that driving instructor I had. Maybe they'll, she'll be nice. The next time. She doesn't seem like the type to apologize. Mm -hmm. She seemed like the type she wanted to be in a bad mood. Yeah. What can I say? People born foolish. People born foolish. When are you going to do like RuneScape, Lucia? RuneScape, Lucia? Yeah. I don't know enough about RuneScape. Well, just, just draw her as in the RuneScape style. I don't know what Ugly. the RuneScape... Okay. Have you ever looked at RuneScape? It looks awful. Damn. I, I played RuneScape for a long time. I, I can bitch about it all I want. I once, when I was a young lad, attended a marriage Santa ceremony in RuneScape. A what? A marriage ceremony. I watched two people. They were they were they were RuneScape girlfriend and boyfriend. I watched them get married. Like, did they actually? No, we, it was it was someone you know. Oh, that's all. I'll say. Oh, it was it was when uh me and them used to play RuneScape a lot. And then I think I think sadly they got divorced. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> the RuneScape relationships were never built to last. That was back when RuneScape was only for the coolest kids, though. So everyone knew if you were playing RuneScape, you were a fucking cool kid. And you were too poor to play WoW. Imagine. That was me. I was too poor to play WoW, but also I, uh, I didn't want to. Yeah, that was also me. I never played WoW once, not in my life. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I get really upset once a year when Bryce messages me like I started playing again. They always pull me back in, man. I don't know. Every time I escape, they pull me back in probably the hardest they pulled me in in years when uh, Dragonflight came out. Uh... And uh, and then I stopped, and then like I don't know. I already feel it pulling me back, man. I just can't. It's it's literally like a drug. It feels like being a drug addict. Stop. Put your time into something productive, like chess. I don't know. Wow, PVP is kind of like chess. I have an episode of South Park. It'd be very important for you to watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I basically go through phases, and it really depends on it, cause, cause Shroom and me play WoW together, and so it really depends. We both have to get pulled back in for it to work. So what'll happen is one of us will start to get the craving, and the other will go, "No, that's a bad idea," 
And then, like, we'll be like, yeah, you're right. And, like, you know, that'll happen for about two weeks. And then one night we'll be playing games together and we'll be really bored. And we'll be like, man, we could just... We could just go run some arenas on WoW. And then we do. What can I say? It, it just works. RuneScape or old school room RuneScape? Neither. I'm sorry. I'll say it. Uh, Damn. old school RuneScape is really fun for nostalgia when I play. Every once in a while, I'll go back and I'll like, I'll be like, man, this takes me back. This is so much fun. And I'll cut down some trees and then I'll cut down some more trees. And then I'll remember that's the whole fucking game. It's just that with different things. And then I stop playing. And then new RuneScape is just like, it's, it's much more modern than old school RuneScape. Old school RuneScape, I'll, I will say this. I'll be the one to say it. It's just a, a much worse game than New RuneScape, but people only play it because of the fact that they're very nostalgic for the old school RuneScape, which is fine. But a lot of people try and act like it's just like fundamentally better, which it's just not. It's just like a more tedious version that's baked in nostalgia. Um, that's my personal opinion. Uh, but I also think New Runes or, or the New RuneScape isn't that good, if I'm being honest. I think it's just like kind of like a worse version of a lot of other games. That's my own personal problem with it um you ever consider that you're just a hater i i, st I played runescape just last year like I'm, I'm i'm not saying i'm fully free of the disease the problem with these mmo games is that you're never truly away from them they kind of follow you around your entire life until the day wow dies i'll keep going back to it like a fucking heroin addict okay i just need to i just need to go back and play my monk or play my paladin and feel good about my life for a little bit um what almost got me, I played Paladin most of my time in WoW, and they were one of the worst classes in the game most of my time in WoW, but they recently got a very big overhaul, uh, and that, that's got me curious about going back to them. Um, Just don't do it. Anyway, I probably will. Um, last two questions for today. I've been really wanting to work on my art uh more often but i'm having trouble sitting down to draw each day how much would you say is an adequate amount to try and aim for each day and second i also want to at very least start studying the fundamentals this year but i don't quite know what to start with and so i end up feeling intimidated do you have any advice well you know that's um that's a deep question there's a lot it's a deep subject um I guess I'll start with uh, how much time. I mean, I, I really, the answer to both of your questions um, depends on what your long-term goals are, right? Like, if you're just starting out and you're like, oh, this is just, like, a fun thing and I want to have fun, then just, like, you know, draw whenever and whatever you want, right? Like, if you're not – but if you're, like, dedicated and you're like, I'm, this is going to be a career, this is what I want to do – then you got to draw just as much as possible. I mean, every waking moment that you have, you know, you should be drawing. But like, so if you're just doing it, like having fun, like, you know, maybe you can set like a goal for yourself. Like I want to draw for, you know, an hour each day, two hours each day, whatever. Um, or, you know, it, it maybe like I would set, set up like probably goals around practice. So like if you're just if your goal is just improve as quickly as possible, um, then, uh, you know, you should be probably I mean, you could like i would just go study a lot of videos online i mean there's a lot of great stuff on youtube and i i don't mean uh the popular ones i, I don't mean like ross draws or whatever uh, i don't know if he's still popular but like i don't mean stuff like that i mean actual educational content like psychra especially his old stuff was really helpful uh i think keenan lafferty has some good stuff too some of it's like not helpful but some of it is um like guys at Cynix, uh, guys like that um, can really help you learn a lot. And, uh, and, and you know, fundamentals is this a really broad scope thing. Psychra actually has a video on what the fundamentals are. Um, and his video explaining it's like 40 minutes long. So it's like, it's not a, a simple answer. Um, but my answer whenever people ask me what they should be drawing or what they should be practicing is always the same thing and it's always that you should be practicing uh whatever it is that you want to draw so like if you want to draw comic books that's what you want to do you should be drawing comic books 
uh, a lot of times I'll see people that'll be like, oh, I want to draw comics, but I, I'm not good enough. First, I have to learn how to do this, 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 and this. Well, if you want to draw comic books, you should just be drawing comic books. If you want to do animation, you should just be animating. Um, you know, don't don't pigeonhole yourself uh, based on, like, whatever whatever thing. Like, you don't think you're good enough or whatever. Like, if you want to do something, the fastest way to improve at it is by doing it. Uh, if you just want to draw cool pictures, just draw cool pictures, you know? Um, and naturally, over time, your interest will propel you to improve. So, like, when you're just starting out especially, I don't know what your level is, but when you're just starting out, like, um, you should just sort of draw what you want. And eventually, you're going to get to a point where you're, like, you know, you're having a lot of fun. You're like, I'm just drawing what I want. This is super awesome. And then you're going to get to something, and you're going to draw it, and it's not going to look quite right to you. And you're going to say, like, huh, that's... This doesn't look the way I want it to. How do I make this look the way that I want? And like, oh, I you like maybe you ask a friend or another artist and they're like, oh, your perspective's off or your anatomy's off or whatever it is. And then you say, okay, so I know I have to practice that. And then you can go in and just start practicing that thing because you know that you need to improve at it to get where you want to be um, because you can see that. You can see like, oh, to get where I need to be, uh, this is what's holding it back from the image looking the way I want to. Um, I, I, I really, I guess, believe in just the natural approach of like, you know, improving when you want to improve, because if you draw enough and you do enough stuff, you're eventually going to get to the point where you want to improve certain things, right? Like you want to be like, oh, I need to be better at this thing, or I want to be better at this thing. Cause like, you know, it's not looking right in my drawings. Um, and, and, you know, for a long time, just drawing a lot is going to be the quickest way to improve. Like a lot of people that are like really super beginners will message me and be like give me a critique on my art and i'm like i mean i could but i mean you real realistically you know a lot of those people need like to put in an extra you know thousand hours into drawing before they're even at a point where i can give meaningful critique you know um so it just depends on who you are what you want out of it where you are already uh but overall is in terms of like a broad sort of strategy i think that the best approach is just um, do what you want to do, you know, learn the stuff that you want to learn. Because otherwise, like if you just go in there and like, especially if you're like casual about it and you just it's like a hobby and you're like, I need to learn all the fundamentals. And you go and you start grinding like perspective and that's all you draw for a year is perspective and you get really, really good at it. Uh, you might realize like, oh, man, I've been doing all this drawing and I don't I didn't have any fun. I actually didn't like any of it. It's like, you know, drawing is supposed to be fun. So like I said, especially if you are, uh, you know, like just, just having fun with it. It's just a hobby. Just draw what you want to draw. You know, have a good time. Um, don't worry about like forcing uh, improvement in there just because you feel like you need to. Now, if you want to, that's a different thing. And you can do that. I mean, I've gone through periods where I've really, you know, been hardcore grinding to improve my skills. And a lot of times it's not fun. But, you know, I, I was at a point where I really wanted to make a career out of it. So that's why I was doing doing that. And, and it did help me improve a lot. And there are ways you can do that. Um, but it's maybe not as fun. And so for hobbyists, I always say that the best way to do it is just have a good time. And I can attest that from day one, you were doing comics. Yeah. Um, yeah. From literally the first minute that you started drawing with any like sort of modicum of seriousness um you were just doing comics <clears throat> yeah it's the qu quickest way to get better at something is to do it so you know if you like I said animation quickest way to get better at animation is animating quickest way to get better at uh, and you know studying it like quickest way to get better at comics do comics um Pinups, pinups, designs, do designs. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's all connected. one of the hardest things about that. One of the reasons it's really hard to answer the question of um, the I'm um, having trouble sitting down trying to draw all day. How much stays an adequate amount to try and aim for is because I think there is no answer that's easy to give, um, at least in my personal opinion, because I think that there is the answer of like you said, like um, if it's a hobby, you just do it as much as you want. And if you want to set like a goal for yourself, just do it. But I think that if you want to genuinely make a career out of something, there is a, there is a hard answer that I really, I really hate to give because I feel like it sounds, it sounds like I'm saying something negative or anything, but um, 
I think you just, you kind of, you have to draw as, or do whatever you want to do, be it writing, whatever, as much as you, you can. Uh, honestly, this is where it gets a little hard to say, like, even if it makes you kind of uncomfortable, like you kind of have to push yourself. Um, because early on, it's, it's, it's hard to, to write or draw or do whatever as much as you want to do it. Um, but you need to, a bit, the biggest part about being able to do something, and again, this only applies if you're talking about wanting to do it as a career, like you want to do it every day is being able to do it every day. Like that's, that was the, 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 the hardest hurdle to overcome with me as a writer was getting to the point where I could do it every day, where I could sit down and even if I'm having a bad day, do my job. And I'm, I mean, I still like, I have a, I have bad days where like I try and write like yesterday I didn't get much writing work done because I was just it just wasn't flowing for whatever reason but like 99% of the time that doesn't happen and I I, I wasn't like that at the start uh, at the start you know I had to build that stamina um, you know when I started writing seriously I uh, I did 2,000 words every single day seven days a week um, I'm not saying you should do that uh, I'm not saying you should sit down and force yourself to write a certain amount every amount of day but i'm just saying it's just like it's one of those things of um to to get better and to 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 grow and to to get to the skill set that uh and get to get the skills just in general uh it's a bigger broader thing than just like your skills as an artist um to to be able to do this every day as a career it's just it's it's you get back as much as you put into it um and that's just the uh the best answer i have it's not easy i would say honestly the hardest part of the entire shit is the early stages where you're you're having to push yourself and make yourself kind of uncomfortable um sometimes really uncomfortable uh scott and i talked a lot about burnout and things that we experienced early in our careers and a lot of the struggle we went through and how we've learned to manage that so it doesn't really happen again um but it's, I mean, it's just, it's all part of it. Every, every artist or creator, you know, that is successful has gone through that exact same period. Just do that. Just do that. Also the Ty keep said, do you post as much as possible? Uh, no, cause I'm always doing other stuff. Uh, like, you know, we're working on comics, you know, the panty bear kindred heavens just coming out soon. Like I'm, I always have other stuff going on. So there's a large chunk of my time that is not dedicated to doing stuff for, you know, I would say probably only about half to a third of my time is dedicated towards Twitter and Patreon, um, which, you know, is not actually all that much uh, in the grand scheme of things. But um, it's because I'm focusing on other stuff. No, if I wanted to, I could post every day of the week. Um, I've done that before. I did that for several months. Um, but it's not something that uh, I, have, I have a lot of other stuff that I want to be doing. So I can't put all my time into that, um, which, you know, it's a trade off, right? Like I'd be more popular, probably do, you know, on uh, Twitter and stuff like that if I posted every single day. But that's the trade-off. Like, I have other stuff that I want to do. Um, Twitter is not the end goal, so to speak. So, um, no, I don't post every day. But I draw every day, except for the weekends. Yeah, I think also one thing you do to make it a lot more manageable is, like, when you don't... Like, the the way you have your big backlog and everything is when um when you also... A bunch of trash. Thank you for the raid. Um, thank you. The party of two. <laughs> Gucci Dishes says you've been raided. Thank us individually. <laughs> thank you as well. Um, I like it. I like the hoot spa there. Um, but uh, is that like when we enter a lull period or a period where we're not working on um, like where we're uh, Kindred Heavens one just ended. Uh, you use this time a lot to just pump out like a ton of backlog stuff. Typically. Yep. Um, you also use this time to uh, not put the Twitter posts in drive, um, despite the amount of times I've reminded you to do it. It'll, uh, it'll get, it's in there. Just don't check until tomorrow. Wow. 
See, the problem is you don't message me. You tell I me did. to do it in person. I did message yeah, you earlier today. But the problem is I don't read. You all said your you said message me after we eat and I'll do it. And I even gave you an hour because I knew if I messaged you right afterwards, you were gonna be like laying on your floor or something asleep. That's no. Yes. You know, we've eaten, we're going to be eating real healthy today. We ate Taco Bell for breakfast. And we're going to be eating five guys for dinner. Listen. That's up there with health. At least we didn't have McDonald's. I mean, I guess, I guess that's true. Then again, if we had McDonald's, I don't think we'd be having five guys in the same day. Uh, Felan said, I appreciate the answer anyways. It feels a lot better, uh, hearing and knowing that you guys acknowledge how hard it is. Yeah, it's very hard. There is a, uh, there is a very big reason that a lot of people like that. It's, 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 it's hard to break in. It's not, um, it's, it's not easy and it requires a lot of, uh, personal dedication, a lot of luck. It requires a lot of things. Um, that's why, especially like none of the answers we give are firm. They, like if you there there's there's a million different ways to make it um we can only really speak to the way that we've made it and the philosophy that we've seen work for us and work for other people favorite taco bell item scott what's that shit i always get the crunch wrap supreme the crunch wrap supreme with a uh, jalapeno sauce on it that i i get um What's that shit I get called? It's like a chicken... Chipotle griller. I fucking call yes. it Chipotle because you always call it Chipotle. God damn it. The it's chicken like Chipotle griller. griller. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the good shit. I like that a lot. They're pretty good. Uh, the problem with them is I feel like I could eat 10 of them. It's not the largest menu item, for sure. Whereas the crunch wrap, at the very least, like, I feel like I eat that and then I'm full. You guys seem very close as friends and creative partners, and it's really nice to see from an out-time perspective. Was there any time you can remember that you had your biggest disagreement, work-related or otherwise? Definitely we were younger, we had some fights. Uh, I would say these days, you and I very seldomly, I would say we almost never have any work disagreements anymore. Um, like, I legitimately can't remember the last work disagreement we had. Well, we have disagreements. We just resolve them. In I meant, yeah, I meant that like was anything substantial. Yeah, we we have when you work together and have been friends as long as we have, you just kind of you know all each other's quirks, good and bad, and so resolving situations becomes a lot easier. Especially when we learned very early on in our our career how to compromise because of a really big argument that we had when we were like 17 <laughs> over a certain story idea. It was one of the first, it was the first story we were ever writing together. We had been working on it for a few months. Uh, I was a senior and he was a junior. Um, and we were arguing over this one fucking stupid idea. And it was just whether a character would have a metallic arm or not. That's how fucking <laughs> stupid it was. It was that small of a thing. And we, Scott wanted it and I didn't want it. And we, fuck, I mean, we argued and argued. It went on for fucking days. And then we were like, fuck you, let's play a game of MLB The Show to decide who wins. And Scott beat me and was very braggadocious about it. And I got really, really mad at it. No, him. no, no, you're missing the, the I, thing. I, yeah, I, you can tell that part, go ahead. Well, what had happened was what it is, is what it is is i we were it, the game was kind of getting a little bit out of hand like it was near the end of the game it was i think probably like six or seven to nothing um i was winning and i'm i'm like you know i'm just kind of sort of having a good time but I, i'm also just like i'm on my phone like i'm not really paying that much attention anymore because it's not it's not super close right and uh I had the like bases loaded and I'm like sort of looking at my phone and texting and all of a sudden I look up at my screen and the bases are clear and I'm like, oh, did I hit a grand slam? I wasn't even looking at my screen and and I realized after I said it because Bryce was really pissed off <laughs> and I and valid, but 
Yeah, and uh, it was one of the few times, this is back during our Xbox days, when we talked over, or our PlayStation days, when we talked over PlayStation. Uh, I just remember I just turned my PlayStation off and walked away. I was so mad at him. And then we made up, and it actually became a whole big thing where we, like, that was a big growing moment for us on how to actually compromise on story ideas. And so that never really happened again after that. Um, there have definitely been some lifetimes we've both been pretty pissed at each other. Um, I'm trying to think of anything well, that'd say be funny. As, uh, I'll, I'll say again on the um, the note of like you know for work stuff. I when, usually like a, a lot of it comes with having faith in one another, and so like if we disagree on something, like we both have different ideas of how something should be done, but like the other one just like super hardcore believes in one way and like is like super adamant about it usually the other one's like okay like i may disagree with you but like if you feel so strongly about it like you might be right you know what i mean um and that that sort of just comes with having worked together for so long and having trust in one another um yeah i think that uh and i think that there's very few times that's not really worked for us um yeah because it's like I said, it's it's just trust. It's like, oh yeah, I I mean I I trust this guy obviously, um, and if so, like may, maybe I'm wrong. Like if he believes this strongly in it, then you know maybe I'm uh, I'm wrong. Oh my god, I forgot they added real time gradients to Photoshop now, but it makes a new layer, so I have to fucking clip it. That's yeah. actually sick. I'm trying to think if there's anything we've definitely. We also don't really have many, like, personal, like, outside of work disagreements these days. When we were younger, we did a lot. Um, there was a specific arc of my life where Scott and I, <laughs> where we were, uh, we were, we were pulling hairs every time we talked to each other because I was a bit of an ass. Um, but I can't think if there's anything, like, super, super funny. Any disagreements? Funny? Right? Probably not. The funniest one's probably that Grand Slam one. <laughs> I don't know if that's funny to anybody else, but it's pretty funny to us now. What was so was the metal arm a crucial plot point? No, I don't even think it was. No. It was like a side character and I I remember I had an idea that like there was cuz it's like a shonen like comic and so I was like, "Well, we have these two characters fight and one of them cuts the other one's arm off." And so that guy has to get like a like a like a fake arm, like in full we metal. We were outcome. we were very original for sixteen and seventeen years old. Yeah, and and uh, he was like, "No, that's stupid." And 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 in hindsight, it was stupid. But Scott used to also, and sometimes he still does this a little bit. He uh, if he likes something or if he feels a certain way about it, whether it's right or he actually believes in it. And he doesn't do this anymore with work stuff, but he used to. Um, he'll fight for it. <laughs> like, he doesn't want to lose. <laughs> Even if it's not, like, anything he actually cares about. It's because I'm a winner. Um, and that's that's actually what... That that uh, is probably what most of our disagreements used to come from. Um, also, I will say, a lot of our work disagreements before the, the, the losing his arm thing came from the, that. And from the fact that... um. I, I'm a fucking maniac sometimes. Um, and Scott, I would say, Scott's really good. Like One really great thing about our working relationship is that I feel like we really lucked into being strong at the thing the others are bad at. So like, I'm really good at characters and at like coming up with like big ideas and like world building and all like that kind of stuff and detail stuff. Scott's really good at tying a story together. Like he's actually really good at being like, okay, we have all these scenes. I'm gonna put them into a story. And like we have that a lot. Um, but I'm also sometimes I'm just a fucking maniac, and I'll just come up with like the, like if if I get to work on my own books, like when I write my own novels and stuff, I really legitimately have to control myself because I am like. I'm, I like to just take left turns and throw random shit in. And so Scott has to really reel me in sometimes because I, I don't know. I'm fucking crazy. He's a mad man. Um, who's better at handling the money? Uh, I'd say we're both pretty good at handling money. Handling is in like, like spending it or like. I'm I'm usually the one that has to cash out because the uh, PayPal goes to my Patreon, but 
As far as like spending it, I don't. I don't think there's really a difference. I would say before I, I everything move... that we buy uh, is like like obviously we both agree to it, so it's not like one of us is like the finance guy or anything. Yeah, I would say. Uh, I yeah, I would say that we both like. I don't know. Yeah, it's. I I, I don't think one's really better than the other or anything. Um, I would say we both value spending our personal money on different things. As in, he likes to go out to eat and have memories, and I like to buy stupid Nintendo games. <laughs> um, but, you know, since I've moved, I've gone out to eat a lot more, and I don't think I've really bought a single old stupid Nintendo game. Um, I lied. Here's another. Would you say it's better to design a character from scratch, or is it also okay to base it off an existing one while making it different enough? Context. There's a popular girl I see and say, damn, I want one like that. I apparently can't read, so forgive me for butchering that. Well, I, I mean, every design in one aspect or another comes from something else. Like, nothing's completely original. You know, I, I, I don't mean to turn this into a thing about AI, but that's like one of the things I always think about uh, with AI is like, it's an interesting dilemma because like people are like, oh, but it just references other stuff. It doesn't create anything original. And I'm like, yeah, but that's also what we do. Like that's, I mean, that's also our whole shit. Um, like as artists, you know, like everything that every art style is just the culmination of a bunch of other art styles that that artist happened to like, uh, you know, for the most part. And so like, I, I think it's fine if you just like you start with something like that, because that's like, I think that's what a lot of stuff is. I think that's how a lot of it happens. Um, you know, you start with like thing. Now, you know, you should try and make it different. But as far as that goes, because that's something that also comes up a lot in like writing and storytelling is like sometimes you'll have an idea and be like, oh, but it's similar to like this other thing. Um, and that used to bother uh, us a lot. Like that used to be something that we thought about a lot. Um, but uh, I think weirdly enough, it was Mark Crilly that said this. Uh, but it was basically something along the lines of like, um, if you are honestly not trying to copy something and like you're honestly trying to make your own thing, even if it turns out to like have similarities to something else, it'll still be original because you're, tr you're trying to make your own thing. Um, and that's the way I try and think about stuff. Like there are times where like, you know, you might be inspired by, I mean, like we're, we're working on a story right now that's inspired by John Wick. Um, <laughs> I mean, not true. Kindred Heavens. Um, yeah, not Kindred Heavens. But like... No. But, like, you know, it's, like, it's our own thing. And, like, we just have faith in ourselves. It's, like, okay, yeah, like, this may have been, like, the jumping off point for what we, we sort of did. Um, but, like, we're making it our own shit. Uh, and I think the same thing goes for character designs. Um, you know, you may start with, like, uh, a character and be, like, oh, this is, like, uh, Yamato from uh, One Piece. Um, but, you know, you can make that your own. Like, you can borrow concepts from that, like, the multicolored hair and 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 stuff like that or the uh like the big pants um while still making it your own thing it's possible to do both it's possible it's possible just do that so turnabouts yeah It's crazy you can do all this on Photoshop. What do you use to draw? No, that's cool. What do, I was trying to figure out the question. What do I use to draw? Photoshop. Your, your fucking tablet, dumbass. Oh, uh, it's a Wacom 16. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with you? I don't remember if it's a pro or if it's just the normal one, but it's a Wacom 16. Cintiq. Uh, if I say enough words, it'll be right eventually. <laughs> Just want to say thank you both for putting out such great content that continues to push my drive for my own artwork because I have to dip out and leave for work soon at the beginning of your creative endeavors. Uh, and such was it super taxing to have to balance your personal lives with your careers before they became full-time careers. We didn't have personal lives. Before yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's probably uh, the, the benefit we had is that our only friend, we were, we didn't really have any friends except for each other. Early in our careers, he was in a relationship, but I was not. 
um and our families like we weren't really like going out and doing things with our families constantly or anything um which you know that's one of the 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 real the the parts of like doing this full time is like you got to make sacrifices you know like you don't have time to go out and hang out with your friends and and have super serious relationships and stuff like that at the same time that you're um you're trying to do this full time so it's i mean it was a legitimate sacrifice uh just staying in and and doing this all the time and now like you know we're a little older a little wiser a little more comfortable so we both are in relationships uh not with each other um and uh can can sort of do things and have take time off uh not not doing it seven days a week anymore um and it becomes easier to manage that stuff. But when you're just starting out, it's really hard to, to maintain everything. And uh, the real answer is that we just didn't. We just sort of sold out and and did uh, just did this. Yeah, we basically threw everything else away uh, that we had in favor of uh, just drawing and writing all day. Now, I, I personally think it was the right decision, but we definitely, a good example, actually, uh, it's something to talk about is Shroom. I've talked about how I'm really good friends with Shroom from the Discord now, but uh, a large part of the reason him and, I, him and I fell out of favor with each other for a good few years, uh, probably like three or four years, because I was just working all the time. And so I never, he was always wanting to hang out and do things, and I was always just like, nah, bro, I'm working. Um and so you know it's just it's it's part of what happened uh the hardest part for me really was when i first got together with amy um uh so her and i've been there for five years so in 2017 is when we got together very end of it um that that first year year and a half especially because she moved in with me really quickly because of some things um that was really rough because then I suddenly had to like, I couldn't just work all the time. And that was still like, I was still working seven days a week at that time. I was still doing like nine, 10 hours of writing a day. Um, and so it was really hard because I remember when her and I first got together, I tried to just do that, especially after we moved in. Like I would just try and write like all day. I'd wake up and I would just start writing and try and write until the end. And uh, really fucking hard to do that and have someone want to stay with you. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I would say there, I would say at the start, it wasn't very difficult just because we didn't really have any, but it definitely, it's, it's, it's been thankfully for us a sort of slow transition into where we are now, where we're actually able to balance our personal lives and our work lives. What, what we're saying is that it's, you know, it's not so easy just drawing titties on the internet all the time. It's hard. It's hard being us. We live hard lives. But no, it's, I mean, it's, uh... You know, it is what it is. It's like that's just the choice that you have to make uh, to do this. Is like, okay, do I? Am I willing to sacrifice um, certain things? Like, I mean, one of the like my I, my sister. You know, she's seven now. Like, I didn't really. I growing up, even though I was right next door to her, I didn't spend nearly as much time with her as I I would like to have because uh, I was doing this. Um, and like that sucks, but like it is what it is, right? Like, you know. Um, and there's I think. Probably any artist that does this full time or does this to like this level uh, probably has similar experiences with that, having to make those sacrifices. Yeah, and a... really, that's with anything, any like long term career, I think. Yeah, it's a big part of the reason I uh, like that. I, I like I won't have kids until I feel like I'm out of that mindset. Um, and I don't know when that will be. Probably not till I'm much older. Yo, Yun Ho's here. Choose your own poison, right? Yeah. Nice. What is up, my dude? Yeah, it um, it's it's just all part of it. It uh, it's one of those things that that's where it gets really tricky to talk about because it sounds almost like you're telling people to do things that are toxic. Um, but it's just one of those like hard answer things where I don't really know what else to tell people other than just like to grind, uh, and just to work as hard as you can. Uh, because the problem with this industry, I would just like the creative field in general and really with anything. Um, but especially our field, uh, is that, uh, it, you know, there, it, it, there's a hundred, like if you, 
if you don't work hard enough, somebody will. And so you just, you know, you just got to bust your butt. Would you guys recommend, in fact, not putting all of your eggs in one basket regarding art? I, I'll be honest. I can't give an opinion on that because I did it. I just took the risk and I don't know what would have happened if it didn't work out. Um, My answer was always anytime someone asked me, like, what are you going to do if writing doesn't work out? And if you're still broke when you're 25 um, jokes on them, I was only broke till I was 24. Um, what I would always tell them <laughs> was uh, I would always basically just be like, well, it will work and I'll be successful or it won't work. And I won't be successful, but I'll still be writing every day. Like, I don't know. Like, that was kind of like my, I had a real crash or burn mentality about it. I think Scott was actually a lot better at handling it than me. But my mentality was literally just like, I'm just going to write and work as much as I can. And it will work or it won't. And I'll starve. Um, Scott actually planned for his future and like started to make a career uh, out of it, like long before anything else. So he could probably speak better on how to handle that than me. Well, I mean, uh, kind of, but also kind of not. I mean, I, I pretty much had my, I, I didn't go to college. Um, I, uh, I think that for a lot of people to make it doing this, you have to pretty much not have a choice. Um, like, you know, it, uh, it sucks in a lot of ways. Like we were just talking about, there's a lot of sacrifices that go with it and, so I think for a lot of people, in order to make a successful go of, uh, you know, um, doing this for a career, like you, you almost have to love it to the point that there's not a choice to it. Like, it's like, okay, I'm just going to make it work. Um, like there's not like the idea of like, oh, I'll make a contingency plan, um, you know, like doesn't even exist in your mind. Uh, and that's not saying that you, you should or you have to feel that way. But I think a lot of people... Uh, do feel that way and that's kind of how I was it was like well I'm I this is what I want to do and I'm just going to figure out a way to make it work um you know if uh you know if it doesn't then like I don't know I'll have to figure something out but like that's that's not like a thing that I and, and I think that there is a way to like you know maybe you you know you should go to college like if you're not a hundred percent sure like if you're not in that mentality of like oh man this is like it's this or nothing um, like if you're not in that mentality a hundred percent, then, you know, maybe you should like make a contingency plan, go to college, get a d degree to fall back on. Maybe you can go into teaching. Um, like there's a lot of other stuff like that. Um, the biggest thing is that like, there's no shame in that. I feel like yeah, that's the one thing I really don't want to be misconstrued. Like we don't think our way was better or anything like that, especially because like, there's a lot of people that did it our way that didn't become successful and it really set them up for a not great like path in life um we just got lucky because a lot of it's luck based um a lot of it's work based but there is a lot of it that's luck based and so that's why it's it's all about thinking the reason scott and i did what we did is because we genuinely felt how we just described the time i i mean i literally remember him and i having conversations uh, about like i don't know it's just like it's just a, a mindset and a way of thinking that like you have or you don't and it's not a good thing or a bad thing um, I would almost call it early in our careers. I, I would say it's definitely not dulled as I've gotten older, but I don't feel that like same, like unrelenting fire about it was when I was younger. But when I was younger, it was like, it was almost comparable to like an addiction. Like I, I just, it was, all I wanted to do was write. I mean, I went like three or so years without playing any video games. Uh, I just, I just wrote all day and I read all night and then I slept and that was what I did. Because all I wanted to, I was just obsessed with writing. Now we're uh, adults and have lives, and it's 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 boring. It's now I can't boring. write for twelve hours a day, and it bums me. Don't out. grow up is what we're saying. Does it sometimes? It actually does sometimes bum me out. That like, that feeling from when we were like eighteen to like twenty one. Like I miss that feeling a lot. I feel like I only ever capture it in like smaller well, bursts. Well, I think it's now. easy to have nostalgia for it. That was a pretty fucking miserable time. No, it was. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about like our lives. I'm just talking about specifically like the feeling I felt towards writing in that time. Well, I think the feeling was just desperation. Um, I guess that's fair. Yeah, like writing, like like needing to write like that all day. 
yeah and now that we're a little bit more comf comfy we don't have to be so desperate about it um but uh you know it's so like it, there is like you know you get a lot of good work uh being that desperate but it's not exactly it was a very much a, a crash and burn type of mindset uh it would lead to a lot of negative things I'm so happy that they have the the gradients now. That's so crazy. Photoshop the best. For real? Don't they have preset things now? I think they have preset. Thank things. you for the sub, Rod Folk. Thank you. I think they added uh, presets for. Hmm. Maybe that's just in the. What beta. time are we hanging out today? Like, what time know. are we coming over? I'm getting hungry, so. I mean, I'm I'm also getting hungry, but we have to wait for your Amy to get home, don't we? Yeah, she has to go to the store. Photoshop presets. This man still didn't answer my question. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I just figured after work. I feel the same way. It's a mindset where regardless of how long it takes, uh, I will make art and creation a career. Why put any energy into a backup plan? It kind of feels like you aren't putting your all into plan A, Ty Keep says. It's true. That's kind of a... That, that, that's that's how we felt when we were younger. I know that they added this, but I don't know where it is. Bye, feline. Hope you have a good rest of your night. Bye, feline. Any plans on having a booth at a con? Yeah, we really want to. We were going to have one at, uh, at, what was it, Lexington Comic Con? But yeah. we ended up not. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to. That's probably a plan for later this year, next year, uh, to start doing cons more regularly. Biggest problem is just we just haven't had books to sell up until recently. But with but Kendra now Heavens, we do. Yeah, with Kendra Heavens and Panty Bear, and then the books we have coming next year. Oh, they do. Okay, great. Oh man, I was wondering why this was looking so weird. It's just stacking all of them. <laughs> Oops. There's also a more button. That looks kind of cool, actually. I'm not going to use it, but it's kind of cool. I heard you AI generated a dog into the background of one of your drawings earlier. I did a golden retriever. So I heard Photoshop's ability to create backgrounds has grown exponentially. Yeah, I'll pull that up in a second. I'm looking. Oh, yo. Yeah. That actually looks kind of tight. I can't lie. Do a yeah, loop, no, but they with added... the X-ray. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, that is the thing. Um, yeah, Photoshop added a uh, AI generative tool uh, to the new beta version. Um, and you can essentially... I don't have... This isn't the beta version that I have pulled up right now, so I can't actually test it out on stream but um i had like a background in one of the images i was doing and i asked it to uh add in a golden retriever to the background because i thought that would make it more interesting and so it added in <laughs> it added in a golden retriever he's just a goofy little guy 
He's just a goofy little guy. I'll show. I'll actually. I'll show the image because I did the whole thing. <laughs> so it's, it looks, this is, uh, It looks like a harm. Like it looks. It's. It looks like a nightmare now within the background, like that, like half obscured. <laughs> Thanks, Photoshop. <clears throat> yeah. I appreciate your new tools. So, are you gonna do a lewd of this milf, Lucia? Yeah, there are loot versions. Okay. I'm I'm not asking for any reason. I was just curious. But yeah, it's golden retriever. Look at him back there. So you've heard it here first. Scott's getting into AI art. Yeah, I'm I actually all of my art's AI. Yeah, yeah. Asking for a friend is true. I think it would be cool if there was a model that could consistently generate my style. I think that'd be fun to play with, if nothing else. Um, well, too fucking bad, kiddo. There's, there's not yet. So why don't you have a more basic, generic art style then, if you want that? True. That's your answer. True. Don't be so original. Struggling from suffering from success. Suffering, so so so. Buzza buzza. I'm tired. I slept in today, and I'm tired. I don't. I don't know what's going on with me. I've been a sleepy boy it's, these past few days. It's because you're a baby. I don't know what it is. I feel like over the past, like I like didn't really sleep well for like two years, and I feel like this week somehow it all caught up to me. I don't know. I feel like I'm just really sleepy all of the time. Dude, you're sleepy all the time. That's that's anyways. what I'm saying. But like, it's really bad now. You I was. I finished work. Me. Yeah, we'll you. be sitting there like playing games or something, like board games, and he'll be like, he'll be like nodding off. He'll be like falling over. <laughs> yeah. Well. his head on the table. Sometimes we shit. sometimes we stay up late. Sometimes we're up till like eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Any business tips? Asking for a friend. Uh, draw big boobed women. Equal profit. NSFW art. Easy to make money. There's that. Did I hit all the, all the you marks? You got it, dude. Um, any business tips? Honestly, the biggest one I can give that I feel like people don't do because they're too afraid to do it is to promote themselves. And what I mean by that is even like people will have Patreons and stuff and they won't promote their Patreons under their Twitter posts and like you'll talk to them about it and they'll just be like, oh, well, I don't want to like seem like a shill. And it's like, no, do that. Shill for your own stuff. That is no one the else is going to do it for you. Yeah, that is the only way. People will not be able to give you money if you do not tell them how to give you money. So do it and don't be ashamed. Nobody's going to look at if you post a Twitter post and then you post underneath it like this is my Patreon where you can see boobies. No one's going to be like I'm fucking unfollowing that guy cuz he blah, 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 blah. But yeah, and you know you can if you're if you don't believe that Scott does that under every single post. <laughs> In and essence, it, yeah. Yeah, and it works out just fine. So it's like, yeah, just put yourself out there and just like pr promote the places where people can give you money because if people like you, they want to get you money. Um, that's that's one of my biggest pieces of advice. Uh, another big piece of advice I give is just like if you ever work with somebody, really think about it. That sounds really simple and generic, and that's one of those things that like. You think I'm fucking with you? You think I'm not giving you real advice right now? But you'll 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 have a point in your career where you'll want to work with somebody just because you like them, or because the situation seems right, and it will end up being a bad idea. This has happened to me and Scott a few times, and every time been a bad idea. One time, legitimately hampered our career for a good while. Um, just have to uh, just really think about who you work with. Just be thinking a little bit. Just, just be thinking. I don't know. There, there's a lot. Business is one of those things that Scott and I, I feel like, uh, aren't actually that good at. Speak for yourself. Think about taxes. Really think about that. Please, everyone, oh, think about taxes. <laughs> everyone listen to me right now. If you make a career, if you're a creator and you make money, just really think, write everything down, be smart, have a guy. 
Just don't be like if us. You, if you make enough money that you are subsisting off of your career, go go get somebody to do your taxes for you. Don't do don't, it yourself. Don't be like us. Don't be like us. Th things will be bad. It will be a rough year for you if you're like us. Do better. <laughs> don't be do like better us. than we did. Don't have to sit in a tax office with a man and have him give you bad news. <laughs> And then you go like, oh, that really sucks. And then he goes, but wait, let me tell you about last year too and how bad that could be. And then it just like the number keeps getting bigger and you keep getting sadder as you're sitting there. Don't be like That's not the us. one that matters, boys. Don't, yeah, but that's not <laughs> the one that matters, boys. <laughs> there was a time where he, you know, we were in the office and he was like, oh, you guys, actually, you're going to, it looks like you're going to get money back. And like he told us and like, it's like, we were like, Wow man, we really did it wrong, and, like, you know, we're getting money back. This is great. And then he's like, oh, no, you owe that much. And we were like, oh, oh, no. It was a lot. There was a time where he went, he went, so how about your self-employment tax? And we, our jaws hit the floor. Well, I thought that we had paid the self-employment tax. I know. Tax. It, it turns out that uh, we hadn't because of an error in turbo tax and uh oh we paid it well, now. we paid it now thanks government all i'm saying is that they, they they just take a lot of your money they just come at you there's a self-employment tax oh yeah it's expensive too isn't it how much is it yeah, it's like know. it's like almost 20 percent yeah, I will say this. I won't. I don't. In talk, America, I don't want to talk about any sort of money stuff with me and Scott. But I will say that I paid damn near as much in self employment tax as I did in actual tax. Like that's how crazy yeah, the self employment tax is. No, it's a is. lot. You will basically like I, it's fucking legitimately insane. That's why we are saying like, please, really get a guy, have them help you, um, because you will pay. You you will pay a lot. Why though? You will My pay. theory is that they don't want people to be self employed. <laughs> um that's my theory i'm not i'm not coming after the government or anything i'm just saying they they want they're trying to keep us down dude it's something to do with medicare um or medicaid and like paying into that uh or like social security because like we don't have self-employment you don't pay into social security on your tax i i don't know i don't understand it all really but uh, it's a lot. It's expensive. So just, um, that's my biggest business tip. Be like us, or don't be like us. Be smart before you owe money. Uh, because if you're like us, then you'll learn that you owe a lot more money this year, but also last year. And you're going to have a bad time. And you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have to sit in the tax office with an old man who's very kind. But we gave him some Kindred Heavens merch for helping us. It's true. He is the first person on the planet with Kindred Heavens merch. That is true. Wow. And he took it and he looked at it and he went, huh, this is like something you'd really see on TV. I love him. I love that man. I, I'd die for that man. I'd go to war with that man. Hi, just wanted to come out of my lurking state to first of all ask how everyone's doing. Good. And I also want to say that I followed Scott Twitter for a while thanks to a retweet a Danish hamster made of one of the Lucia arts. And that's, I never regretted doing that as your work's been a great source of inspiration for myself since. So thank you. Also, what better time than to say this is the first stream of yours I'm catching. Oh, well, happy to have you. Why we are you drawing A1 streaming. songs? Uh, like well, because she's she's dressed up as a cow. Like it's you know it's that thing. Yeah. And so I thought it would be funny if she was drinking milk and eating a steak while she was dressed up as a cow. And the A one sauce. I don't know. I I just like A one sauce. I I don't know what to tell you. I hate that he does this. He puts A one sauce on steak, and it really upsets me. Although Only you know, if it's like kind of a mid. -steak. You know, I will say though now now that I've eaten at that Texas Roadhouse a few times, I almost wanted A one the last time. There are that place sometimes. has gone downhill. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. it's gotten so much worse in like the two months, three months that I've been here. 
They have good. Well, they failed that health inspection. Uh, why don't you like a one? I don't know. I just, I just believe, I just believe a steak should be good enough to be eaten on its own. And I yeah, feel but like sometimes they're not. I know, but then like then I don't want that steak. And that's kind of how I yeah, felt but, about the past like two times we've gone to the roadhouse. You have that steak. Really, the if I'm being 100 percent honest, half the time the only reason I want to go to the roadhouse is for the onion. The onion's pretty tight. The onions, Not it's it's really the only part I like about the roadhouse. Like that, like I'm substantially excited for. Ingo said I made it in time. Well, guys, unfortunately, the bad news is <laughs> that we're about to have thing to think about go. it is. But like actually though. Can't wait to watch another two hours of stream. Yo, Ingo, you, you might get 13 minutes if you're lucky. Ingo, day before yesterday, you said we were going to play chess. Yesterday. You said we were going to play chess yesterday. And I messaged you, and you didn't respond. I think you're scared that I'm finally going to beat you. Because our last couple games have been so close. I think you're a pussy. Wow. Wow, you're just whipping out the big word. Oh, gosh. Is she eating at the roadhouse right now? No. I don't. Th I think this violates dress code. One time I got a steak sandwich, medium rare. When they brought it, it was gray. When I asked about it, they said they could put it back on if, if it was undercooked. Yeah. Well, last time we went, or not last the time, time, one before. of the last times we went. Yeah, it was like I got this. Our, both of our steaks came out, and they were like these shitty thin little steaks, but they were also just fucking torched. I mean, they were like charcoal. And, you know, I, I, I called the waitress over. I was like, you know, I, we ordered um, medium rare. And she looks at it, this perfectly gray, like, mess of a steak. She goes, oh, is that not medium rare? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah, and then she brought it back. And then our steaks were actually a little undercooked. But at that point, we were just there. Although, honestly, undercooked steak doesn't bother me as much as overcooked steak. Yeah, at least it still has flavor. Some people, man, they'd be out there eating fucking charcoal. My mom is one of those well-done people. I know a lot of them. There's a lot of people out there. I, I just don't understand it. Ingo said, Scott, do you want to get beaten live on stream? Well, no, I mean, I, I you know, let's not... Stream's about to end, Dingo. Stream's about to end. No, we don't have to, we don't have time to do a, a whole thing. Dingo said, "I bet I can do it in thirteen minutes." <laughs> Who's the pussy now? I would have won. I had a checkmate. I just didn't see it. The last time we played Ingo. That's cringe. Yeah, it was pretty cringe. I'm not going to lie. Offering I had him like really pinned. And then after the game, I looked at it and it had like a missed win. And it was like you had it was basically like you had a checkmate here, you idiot. And I was like, oh, damn. Turns out I just wasn't good enough to notice. Yeah, that onion at the roadhouse, that shit's good. That makes me happy. The best part about it is it's always so much that there's always so much left. Like, it, like you can really eat as much of it as you want. What are we talking about? The onion, the onion? at the roadhouse. Oh, yeah. You know, though, we should never let them sit us in the middle again. Yeah. Your Amy was like, ooh, I kind of like this. I hated it. I veto it. Yeah, I'm not a, not a big... I'm not big on that. We just watched softball the entire time we ate. It was a weird time. Yeah, it was like... It, there were two softball teams, and one of them was like this... Uh, 
they were like college softball teams and one of them was it was just a bunch of little women like they were like tiny it looked like they were freshmen and then the other the rest of them like the team they were playing it was like they were playing vikings it was crazy <laughs> yeah they were all like huge and strong and had like long braided hair they fucking threw the ball super hard dude it, yeah it was scary i couldn't believe what i was watching i felt bad for for those little girls i was like god someone go rescue them would a1 get this taken down for copyright i don't i mean you've drawn like literal wendy's and dominoes yeah, i'll sue the rest no you won't you know, asking for a sponsorship i still never forget True. that time we ate our, our cheese steaks with a1 sauce that stuck with me did you do that last time you went there i did does it still slap it does that's crazy they started bringing out uh two a1 packages. holy shit i know I use them both. Well, you know what? They must see, and they, they must go, that's the guy that likes day one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, it's like they have a bet going. Like, how long before somebody uses he, the he actually eats? Yeah. And we were the guys. And then they were like, these fucking idiots. What the fuck are they doing? No, no, no. We're, we're trendsetters. We're trendsetters. One day I'm going to have to go back down to that the fucking flea market down near there. Yeah, that was fun. That was one of the first things you saw in Lexington. Yeah, it uh or in, in yeah. Kentucky, I mean. Yeah, it um Yeah, I want to go back down there. I want to go back down there with intent to actually buy things. I tried to get you to buy a dog. No, oh, yeah, I'm not going to buy a dog. <laughs> Why not? Pussy? I don't want a dog. You can drive now, kind of. That doesn't mean I want a dog. Eh. You want a dog. I want to enjoy the time of me and Amy going wherever we want for a while before I have a dog. Well, the real benefit, though, is that uh, we can dog sit for one another. It's only a problem if we're all going somewhere. That is true. There was one time where Scott was going to have me dog sit. You would have thought he was handing me the nuclear codes. He <laughs> he prepped me so much as if I had not owned a dog almost my entire life. Well, you know, listen, you can never be too careful. Now, granted, Thor is a fucking maniac. So, like, I, I, I get it. He's not like most dogs. Bryce, the breed you want to have is called Radical Rottweiler. You know, you, you were almost attacked by a Rottweiler the other day. I don't know if we told that on stream. Was it? Wasn't that the, the dog that uh, ran at you? What? Are Rottweilers not the... What are the wiener dogs? That's what I'm thinking of. A Dotson. A Dotson. Rottweilers are the huge... Uh, well, that's not what it's actually then. <laughs> I don't know shit about dogs, really, except for... I, had a, I owned a beagle my whole life. Jesus. Like, are I you even sure? <laughs> After that, I don't know. Well, she was a beagle on a pointer mix, yeah. Thor is just everything. He's a cow. <laughs> Bitch, I'm a cow. Yeah, why didn't you uh, AI generate your dog for this one? Maybe this is AI generated. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll look for somebody to read. Looking for someone to raid. Looking for someone to raid with the boys. I hope everyone enjoyed stream. We'll be back on Friday. Uh, I don't have anything else interesting to say, really, except for uh, goodbye, Ingo. Oh, wait, I can't raid because I'm not signed in. 
I'll, to fucking, I'll do it. Jesus Christ. I'll send you the person to raid. Or wait, you can pull up Discord on, like, it won't be on stream, right? I'll flip to the pause screen. Okay. It's just slash raid and then their name, right? Yep. Okay, everybody. Well. All right. Well, bye. Bye, everybody.